The entire day was throwing me for a loop. It had taken a few hours to get my parents to stop asking questions about Wade and talking about that fiery, hot kiss he'd given me in the middle of the street. Really, Mama, it's not that serious. I told her for the tenth time, over a generous helping of filet mignon, shrimp and baked potatoes, with a backdrop of the rosy glow of sunset on Black Diamond Bay. The dinner cruise had been amazing, full of music from my parents' era, we barely felt the movement of the sea craft as it floated along the coast. That kiss seemed pretty serious to me, Amina. Mama glanced at me over her plate, then popped a fork full of potato into her mouth. Daddy nodded, already a drink or two into the evening. Open your eyes, sweetheart. A man doesn't kiss a woman like that, look at her like that, without meaningful intention. Do they rustle? Woman, I told you, don't get me involved in this girl talk mess, he grumbled. But since you're asking me, he added, leaning forward a little, the man is more than a little sweet on you. And if I'm not mistaken, the feeling is mutual, hmm? <laughs> I mean, of course I care about him. Come on now, Amina, Daddy said. He pierced a slice of steak and shoveled some baked potato into his fork. There was a lot more than care in your face today. Reminds me of when I met your mama. She had this look, see, this look that told me I was more than just some nice boy she'd met, that she might entertain for a minute. Russell, I had no such thing. Please don't make it too poor to women lying at this table. You telling Amina she looked like she's in love with the boy? I'm saying I saw the same thing in you when we met. I felt a blush crawl up from my chest and inflame my cheeks. I didn't know anything about this look they were talking about, but I was never so anxious for dinner to be over. Sort of. Because for the first time, in a long time, my parents and I were getting along. More than getting along, we were on our way to being close again. After dinner the evening before, the air between us had been stiff, thick with tension and unsaid words and perhaps misunderstood motives. I was proud of myself, though. I'd stood up for myself and made it clear, once and for all, and unequivocally what my life's goal and dream was about. Now that we were back on good terms, I could breathe easier, except for the conversation I still needed to have with Wade. Seeing him earlier today told me that my heart and my body were not in agreement with my mind. Every nerve ending from my hair to my toes crackled with heat and longing for him. I felt like it had been weeks, not days since I'd last seen him, and he looked as tall, dark, and handsome as the first time I'd met him. I'd spent the day trying not to think about him, the scruff of his goatee between my thighs, his lips on me, the taste of him. But I'd seen my parents off, complete with teary goodbye and promises to return to the island soon and was headed back to my house to shower, put on something a little more seductive, and see this man that had turned my world upside down at a time when it was the last thing I really needed. Chapter 3. Amina I pulled down the metal shade to obscure the open counter, flipped the open sign to closed on the front of the shop and stepped outside, pulling the door shut behind me. My first full day as owner and proprietor of Tiki's and Cream was a success. I had a steady stream of customers, hot and sweaty from being on the beach and ready for a cool, refreshing drink. I keyed both locks and checked the door, then weaved into the stream of foot traffic along the sidewalk. I was going to have to hire some help. Sooner rather than later. If every day was like today. A bump from behind me interrupted my train of thought. I turned to mutter an apology, but the words stuck in my throat. Two broad-shouldered men were so close, I caught a whiff of spicy cologne. I saw wide smiles on handsome, smooth milk chocolate faces bearing perfectly trimmed goatees. One had gorgeous amber-colored eyes. The others were a deep, dark espresso, and he seemed really familiar. 
both stepped aside as they passed me, nodding in my direction as they continued their conversation. "'Excuse you?' I called out to muscle-bound backs. They turned to face me, genuine surprise in both sets of eyes. "'Excuse us?' said the shorter one. "'You came out of there and didn't even look where you were going. I almost tripped over you. So excuse you, miss. You could have said something. You bumped into me. Almost knocked me over, miss,' said the taller one, lifting a hand. I guess to quiet me. We didn't see that you were coming out of the shop. Excuse us. We cool? I huffed, folding my arms across my chest. Fine. We cool, or whatever. He smiled and pointed two fingers at me. Then I recognized him. I was letting my smart mouth run all over Billboard's number one hip-hop artist, Gage Coleman. I had his latest release on heavy rotation on iTunes, and my best friend, Paige, was madly in love with him. My eyes grew wide, and I sucked in a loud breath. He placed a finger over his lips and winked, then stuck out his hand. Gage, this is Wade. I'm so rude. Don't mind me. Amina, nice to meet you. Gage's grip was strong, his hand soft as I shook it. Wade reluctantly offered his, and I shook it too. Now that I looked at him instead of glaring at him, I recognized him as Gage's longtime producer. We're looking for beer and good wings. Does that exist out here? A couple of places, yeah. But if you're looking for something close... I pointed toward a worn-out shack at the end of the block with the line out the front door. Sparky's down there has really good wings. Lots of flavors. Get extra napkins, though. They're messy. Gage nodded, rubbing his palms together. Good looking out. He eyed the shop behind me, then glanced at Wade, who rolled his eyes. Looks like you're closed up for the day. Do you want to join us? I did want to join them, actually. I really, really wanted to hang out with famous, handsome men that had just happened to bump into me. But it had been a long day. I still had things to do before I could go to bed. I was tired as hell, and my new job had disgraceful hours. Thanks, but I better be heading home. Maybe next time? I walked around them making myself leave before I did or said something stupid. Again, enjoy your wings. Gage Coleman, in the flesh. And I recognize his producer, too. Wade something. Wade Marshall? Paige's voice rose to an octave I didn't think she was capable of reaching. Are they as fine in real life as they are in the spread for Maximum? Talking about hip-hop's dream team, mm, Gage is everything I want on my team. I laughed, dropping into one end of the couch with a bowl of ice cream. I hope a bullet in your ass is something you want, too. Cherie Coleman don't play about her man. She will cut a bitch. Don't I know it. I heard about one girl in a club getting too close, kept hugging him, hanging on him, grinning all in his face, and wouldn't step back. Cherie took right care of that mess. I heard her tongue clicking and pages turning. Anyway, how long do you think they're in town? I don't know. I haven't seen them before, and I've been here a while. I'm guessing they just got here. And from the looks of the lights going on and off at the house on the corner, that's where they're staying. You mean that big house with the circular driveway and the pool and the everything? Mm-hmm. I hummed, licking ice cream off of my spoon. I loved ice cream. It was my nightly treat. Just a small bowl, to start with. How's everything going? You ready for me to come down there yet? Actually, I said, almost choking on a too big bite of chocolate chunk. I'm going to need some help sooner than I thought. Not saying I can afford for you to quit your new job at that fancy law firm and move down here. They won't miss me. <laughs> right. Does anyone else do any work? I'm pretty sure you do everything over there. You're right. I am dope, and they'd be lost without me. I rolled my eyes, even though she was basically agreeing with me. So what are you going to do about getting some help? See how long I can go before I fall over from exhaustion? Then probably place an ad in the bullhorn. Black Diamond had its own newspaper for residents. If you needed to buy something, wanted to sell something, needed to announce something, it went in the bullhorn. Please don't work yourself to the bone. 
at least not before I build up some vacation time and can come down there. We chatted for a few minutes more while I scraped the bowl with my spoon, my signal that it was time to brush my teeth and crawl into bed. My alarm was set for 5.30, and I wasn't even sure that would be early enough. I'm turning into a pumpkin. Kiss everybody for me. Talk to you soon. I signed off with Paige, dropped my bowl into the dishwasher, and turned it on so that it could work while I slept. A glint of light caught my eye as I passed the kitchen window overlooking the beach. I reached over to the wall and snapped off the overhead light, then waited for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. I watched a figure trudge through the sand, just along the edge of the water, a mobile phone lighting up the night. Since he was walking from the direction of the house on the corner, I guessed that it was Wade. Before I could stop myself, I opened the kitchen door and stepped out onto the deck, flipping on the porch light and walking to the edge. I leaned against the railing and waited for him to slip his phone into his pocket and make his way over. "'It's you,' he said when he got close enough for me to hear him. "'It's me, that loudmouth girl from earlier,' he chuckled. "'I'm not saying all that. I was just checking out the beach. I'm a city guy, so I don't get to see this often. This beach is great. I love the breeze off of the bay at night. As if on cue, we both took a glance at the rolling waves, lit by the moon sitting high above. "'So I guess we're neighbors.' He nodded, glancing in the direction of the large house lit up like Christmas, then back to me. Is Gage's place, but he's lending it out for the summer. He paused, then the rest of the sentence rushed out of his mouth, like he was trying to beat me to some kind of finish line. So listen, I'm sorry about earlier. I was tired and hungry. I shrugged. I was preoccupied. Should have watched where I was going. Well, anyway, my mama raised me a gentleman. My apologies. He paused for a beat, then asked, You run that little smoothie shop there? I do. I nodded. Just opened officially today. Yeah? I heard the smile in his deep tenor. No wonder you were preoccupied. That's good. I like to see people doing for themselves. Congrats. Thanks. You should stop by the shop tomorrow. I'll make you something on the house, if you want. You can't make money giving drinks away. I'll happily pay for something. I laughed, stepping back from the railing surrounding the wood deck. And I'll happily take your money. See you tomorrow. Chapter 12. Wade. If I wasn't on the phone, my workout would have been easier. I like to show up about an hour before Soul Cycle class and get in a little time on the machines. It warmed me up, and the weight sets were better than whatever discount set Gage had put in that puny excuse for a weight room. Since Gage was getting harder to reach these days, I picked up the call when the music from my upbeat playlist faded out and his ringtone chimed in. Are you alone? He'd asked as soon as I picked up. I stared at the phone like he had spoken in Chinese. Am I alone? What do you mean, am I alone? Just what I said. Is Amina there? I huffed a frustrated breath and set down the dumbbell I'd been working with. You know she works early hours. She's been at work. I'm at the gym. What's your problem? I didn't want her hearing the new stuff yet. You know how I am. Yeah, I know how you are. You like to work. I could have had her hang out in another room while we finished. I wasn't into how she just walked up in the house. Like she's used to being there. She is used to being there. We spent a lot of time together. Is that a problem? I mean... He heaved a sigh that was so heavy I felt its weight on the line. I didn't call to get on you, but you're doing it anyway. You got shit to say, may as well come on with it. Stop hitting around and say that shit with your chest. Man, I just... He sighed. I lent you the house so you could concentrate, you know? So you could work, not so you... And I'm working, I growled, turning toward the wall and trying real hard to keep my voice low. You keep talking about me needing to work, but I'm not holding up shit right now. You got samples and you got full tracks. You just need to write. Then we lay out what we want to record when we're back in the city. What about that is not working? Nothing. I mean, yeah, you're working, but in the downtime, you know, you're just different. You're in my ass right now because I'm different in the downtime? What does that even mean? How? 
different, man. You don't let women in like you let her in. Seems like every time I call you, she's over at the house or you're at her house. You let the door open so she could just walk in like that's her house to walk into. That's not you. You don't live that I made room for your toothbrush life. You're Mr. Cold Shoulder. Mr. I got an early meeting. Mr. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of my house. Gage's low chuckle surprised me. I wanted to laugh too, but I wasn't really into what he was saying. I mean, I definitely had a toothbrush at the house, and I had one at hers. I'm not saying I'm not happy to see you with somebody. You're just not happy that that person is Amina. It's not Amina, man. Just like I said, we live and work in New York. You got her real used to you right now, but your schedule is crazy different when you're home. This vacation thing is cool and all, but... What if we get back to Brooklyn and you start mooning about her and work starts falling off again? She starts calling, talking about how she misses you. We can't afford that kind of distraction. You gonna run back to Black Diamond every time you can't make beats? Have her work out the kinks? I paced in front of the rack of dumbbells, shaking with the restraint it took to not grab a 25-pound weight and chuck it through a window. What's happening between me and Amina is between me and Amina. None of this is any of your business. And as much as I don't want to unload on you, as much as you're my dude and everything, you're treading real shallow water right now, G, and you need to step back. Because I don't have nice words about you getting involved with somebody you don't need to be messing with? You sure y'all are just fucking to the end of the summer? From the bass in your voice, sounds like more than that. We've known each other a long time. Too long to not be real with each other, am I right? Yeah, we're real but we've always had respect at the very least. I don't give you advice on how to handle Cherie. You don't get involved in the women I sleep with. You never had shit to say before, so let's just keep that streak going. Keep your mouth off of me and Amina, all right? I didn't wait for him to answer. Just like he hung up on me the night before, I disconnected the call and then turned off my phone. I checked my watch and glanced toward the room where Roderick taught his class. First Amina, now Gage. Everybody was on my last nerve. It was just about time to work off some frustration. I wasn't going to the shop. I decided, after Soul Cycle, that I would go straight home. Have a Pellegrino. Maybe something stronger, even though it was the middle of the day. Fuck it. I was kind of on vacation. Cue up some tunes and get some work done, since Gage was so worried about it. Let Amina have the space she seemed to need and hope she came around. Old habits die hard, though. I looked up to find myself standing in the doorway of Tiki's and Cream, watching Dion and Amina serve the last of their lunch rush. I took up my usual seat and waited for the small crowd to clear, as always mesmerized by the efficiency of the -the behind-the-counter operations. Over time, I'd come to understand that everything about Tiki's and Cream, from the color scheme to the interior design to the workflow engineering, had been Amina's doing. She dreamt it all up, drawn it all out, took it from a vision to a reality then got up every day before sunrise to make it happen. She was a machine, an impressive machine. Beyond her work ethic, I just liked being with her. She found little ways to make sure I knew she thought about me, from the orange cranberry muffins to making sure something special had a ribbon of orange flavor in it. She was adventurous and upbeat, usually, always smiling, sexy as hell, especially those glorious hips. Maybe Gage was right. I was different with her. Because she was different. A nice change of pace and breath of fresh air from the women I met in New York. The ones that recognized me from a block away and turned on the charm. The ones who were always willing to take the paltry table scraps I offered them, thinking it would endear them to me, and, well, frankly, they made me sick. So if I like to spend my time out here on this island while I was working with a genuine woman who was real from tip to toe, what difference did it make? What did it matter to him? I leaned forward, folding my arms on the table, then tipped even more and rested my forehead on my arms. The more I thought about it, I knew full well what difference it made and what it mattered to Gage. He saw what I was doing gymnastics to not see. I was on my way to falling in love with her. Hey, Amina's touch sent a shiver through me. Are you not feeling well? I sat up at the sound of her voice. Her eyes were round with concern. Her mouth turned down at the corners. A wrinkle of worry made a divot in her forehead. A wrinkle of worry made a divot in her forehead. Nah, I said, 
twisting my body so I sat sideways in the chair, inviting her to step between my legs. Her smile was cautious and wary, but she moved in until she was close enough to kiss. I'm good. How are you feeling today? I asked her, hoping she caught my drift. I'm okay. She drew her lips in and averted her gaze. I grabbed her hands and held them, squeezed the cold tips of her fingers between my palms. Just okay? You're usually doing better than that. She shrugged, opened her mouth to say something, but closed it again. Amina, you can talk to me. Is there something I should know? No. She shook her head, her curls waving along with it. Nope, I'm okay. I, my schedule is starting to catch up to me. I think last night I was just overtired. Early mornings and late nights and a lot of activity. She smiled then and winked at me. I wanted to feel encouraged by that, so I chose to be. Okay. So you're saying what? You need a time out? I don't want a time out, necessarily. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm weird, and maybe that's why. Maybe I'm tired. Maybe I'm used to being alone. Maybe you and I spending so much time together is an adjustment I wasn't prepared to have to make. I, so, I mean, I don't know what to say to make this better. I know. She leaned forward, resting her forehead against mine. I don't either. Slowing down means not seeing you as much. But we don't have a lot of time together, so I don't want to. She sighed, her shoulders sagging. I placed my hands on those shoulders and gave her a light squeeze, then slid them down to her elbows and transitioned to her hips and squeezed those too. Her arms lifted and closed around my neck. I kissed her, light and sweet. Not at all like I wanted to kiss her, but I felt like more might overwhelm her, and that was the last thing I wanted to do to her at the moment. Look, I have some things going on, you know, with the music. I could use a little more time to work while I'm out here. I'm not saying we take a break or a timeout or anything, just, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to spend every waking moment together, right? Not that I don't want to, same. She sighed, closing her eyes. Her mouth was a tight line across her face. She wasn't happy. Neither was I. But a step back would be good for both of us. But we should maybe chill for a minute. Yeah, but I'm still going to come in for my frozen sunshines, if that's cool. She faked a light-hearted laugh really well, pulling away, stepping back and busying herself around the shop. It felt like that moment when the sun goes behind a cloud. Immediate coolness, loss of brightness and warmth. I already missed her, and she was standing right in front of me. It's cool. Like I said the night we met, I will happily take your money. She turned to Dion and asked her to make my frozen sunshine. I watched and waited, paid for my drink. But when it came all frothy with a dollop of whipped cream. I didn't really want it. Only wanted it when Amina was making it for me. I took it anyway, sucking down the sweet orange blend as I walked out of the shop, waving to her as I left. I didn't feel good about that conversation at all. I wish I'd kept my original plan of not going in there, not talking to her, giving her space without having to talk about giving her space. Now I was going to be stuck for a few more weeks in a big-ass, too-big-ass beach house, thinking about somebody I was trying not to fall in love with.